Microsoft Web Space. We're going to take a look at ASP.NET and Web Tools 2012.2. We'll look at TypeScript, the all in one code framework, um, and then some tools for helping with Internet Explorer web development. We'll start with ASP.NET and Web Tools 2012.2 that was released on February 18, 2013. Um, this image here is courtesy of Scott Hanselman's blog. This whole thing is called OneASP.net. Um, what it's really showing here are the different parts, the web forms, web pages, all the things that are in green are now separate projects that will be released out of band. Um, so what that means is we're not waiting for a Visual Studio update necessarily to happen for these things to come out. These can come out whenever they have changes available. Um, also adding to it, there are things here that are open source. So you've got the community contributing and making <coughs> this a better product as well. So projects are open source. Um, this is a link to the ASP.NET open source initiative. This is the actual link to the web stack on CodePlex. So you can actually pull down the ASP.NET code and then make changes and compose them and send them up. Uh, again, the ASP.NET and the tools are now projected for every six months out of band. And then there's this other tool called Web Essentials 2012. It's a Visual Studio extension. And we'll take a look at some of the features that that has to offer as well. Some of the highlights include there's been some syntax highlighting and IntelliSense <laughs> improvements for things such as coffee script, mustache, handlebars, uh, JS render, last knockout JS. You can create classes based on JSON and XML. And there's some mobile emulator support for third party emulators, and there's also browser stack integration. We'll talk about browser stack later in this presentation, but let's take a look at creating classes based on JSON and XML. So, to give you an idea of what I'm running here, I'm running Windows 8, and we're going to bring up my desktop. And I'll bring up Visual Studio. And I've created a bunch of projects ahead of time just in case we didn't have access to stuff. So I'm using right now Webform Desk, but you can use your MVC as well. And I want to show the VB stuff first because well, I know VB doesn't always get long. Right now I've got an empty class, nothing going on there. I'm going to bring up my Notepad++, plus plus, so I've got some JSON sitting there. So you can see what this sample JSON looks like, and I'm going to put it into my clipboard. And if I come up here to edit, paste special, paste JSON as classes. Watch what this thing does. Fancy. So it will create the class for you rather than you having to manually create classes on the JSON. Now, uh, wait, what's that? What if you're like, I'm not a JSON person, I'm an XML person? Have no fear. XML is here too. So if we take a look at XML, sample, I'm going to grab that and copy that to my clipboard. Come back under edit and paste special. I'm going to paste the XML as classes. And notice that it's created a class for me. So if we take a look, I'm going to post some of these things here. Go away, go away. And then we'll put this guy over here just so you can see side by side what it did. <coughs> here we go. Up. We've got the X and the root, which they always do. And you'll notice that I pick up my date field as a date. So we've got the name field as a string, date field as a date, string, string, and because that's the way that my XML is structured. Notice that I did this in BB. We can do the same thing over in C Sharp. So if I bring back my solution explorer, and we go back to my C Sharp project. Notice that I've already got the class file created. It would be nice if you just said paste and they created the class file for you. You still got to do that one. I'm going to take that guy out. And edit, paste special, paste 
sex and all of classes. So it does the same kind of deal in C sharp. It's got the string, big time, string, string. So now if you're, if you're getting uh, JSON or XML from various APIs and you need to create classes for them, it's easy to do with this ASP.NET Web Tools 2012.2 update. Can you create classes with like a XML schema or just the raw data? Uh, I think it's just the raw data. I haven't tried with the schema. <coughs> Some other highlights also include uh, template package updates. So a lot of the ASP.NET templates refer to third party libraries that as time goes on, we know that they get updated. Um, and so the packages were updated with the, fol with the following libraries got updated, jQuery, jQuery UI, uh, jQuery validation, modernizer, knockout, and a few other NuGet packages. So if you found yourself using templates that had references to outside uh, packages, be aware that they've been updated to use newer versions of what they used to use. ASP.NET got some updates. Well, it is the ASP.NET and web tools. Some of those include the OData support and ASP.NET Web API. SignalR is now fully supported. Oh, web forms got well. How many of you guys have found web forms to be a bit challenging? Okay, that's a good thing. I've talked with many developers who are like, oh, why don't they just get rid of web forms? NBC is where it's at. Because there are still people who are using web forms. And it's not going to die anytime soon, as long as people keep using it. So they've got the, the beauty of friendly URLs. Um, and there's now mobile specific pages, so you can have your .aspx and a .mobile.aspx, and it'll toggle between them. They've updated the single page app template. They've added the NBC Facebook application template. And uh, websites and web projects now have the same publishing tools. Let's take a look at the friendly URLs. And we're going to my handy dandy friendly URLs projects, both are available in C Sharp and VB. Um, unless otherwise stated, you can assume that C Sharp and VB both got the same amount of load in this update. So, something to note um, both of these projects, the web forms friendly URLs and web forms friendly URLs, based on XML sample VB.net are simple, simple web forms uh, projects. I can actually just do that now if you want another project to see. Go live, that one. Okay, new project. Going to web, web forms, we'll call it live web forms. Oh, so you can see that there's no tricks up my sleeve. So this live web forms demo, the things that we want to take a look at. Oh, under Google ASAX, here's our register routes route table. This is what they're using for friendly URLs. So if you're familiar with it in NPC, same kind of story now. So two things to note are the register routes here in Google ASAX and in app start, route config rocks.enable friendly URLs. Those are the two things that they added to make friendly URLs support. Now if you want to take a look and see what that necessarily means, we could start this. <coughs> and as it's starting, we will see, this is just simple MVC, like, uh, page. Keep in mind that this is the web forms demo that we're doing. If I hover over the URL in the bottom left, it's telling me that it's going to go to this local host address slash contact, not slash contact at ASPX. Yes. And about, but I can also still do the things such as contact at ASPX. I mean, if you're really set, on, if you have those URLs for some reason out there, let's say you've got an old ASP.NET web forms website and you want to add the friendly URLs. Then for backwards compatibility, you just leave these guys alone and add it, and then tell your marketing people to use the new URLs going forward. Uh, 
Um, same kind of running setup as MVC. So if you've got a user ID and anything else, the raw data is accessed the same time. Is there an easy way to nix that completely so it's just from the URLs? Because you're going to take an SEO hit on that. I haven't found a way, but I haven't looked into it. I would imagine that it's just a simple rule to say redirect all that ASPX to 404 or something. Um, again, if you're working on an old site though and want to try to get the friendly URLs and migrate them over, then you probably want to keep them just so that you're not seeing those 404s and do a gradual transition. Alright. So those are the friendly URLs. Before I go too far, as you'll see in the presentation, there are going to be the links like this. I will give the presentation to Sam after the meeting, but I've linked to the different Microsoft documents that will help you understand these, things, these features a little bit better. Um, for example, this MVC Facebook <coughs> application template. I looked at it and I was like, well, maybe I could do a quick demo. And then I looked and there are steps by steps by steps where you're, you create the application solution file or project. Then you have to go to Facebook and change these settings here, and then change this here, and then do this in the app, and follow the link, and it will tell you step by step how to go. Um, and if you create the MVC app and tell you want to do a Facebook application, the README also includes this link. I just keep it here, just for quicker access. A community project templates. This is a goal that they have. So they want it so that um, as members of the community and we're working on project templates and saying, you know what, I'm writing PowerShell command lists over and over and over again. Here's a sample of the, the, the bare bones minimum what I start with, create the template, and then share it. That's what they're shooting for. Um, that was just my example. Um, they would be added via v6 files. They want them so that they're easily shared as NuGet files. So that's their big hope with this whole uh, update. And right now it's currently available for MVC projects. I was looking this up to see a little more details so I could say, oh, this is how they're doing it. And the latest I found was an article from 2009. So I was like, eh, I'm not going to share that with you guys right now. If I find more details on how I can share the community project templates, I pass that on because I know there's many of you here who work on projects who are like, no, there's somebody else who could benefit from this. Let me share this. We'll get into sharing code here in a little bit as well. So, let's say you like these features. Now you're wondering, what do I do? What do I need in order to have this happen? Well, of course you need Visual Studio 2012. There's an online installer and you can install it via a web platform installer. That's how I installed it here on my machine. But let's say that you're in a place where you have an IT guy who's responsible for downloading the packages and you can install it off the network. Have no fear, offline installers are here. There's an installer for ASP.NET 2012.2, and then for the web tools portion, there are two different installers. There's web tools 2012.2 for regular Visual Studio 2012, and then there's also one for the Express Edition. So if you're at home playing with the Express Edition, for example, and then at work you're working with the regular, just make note that you need to do the offline installers that there are two different installers for web tools, uh, 2012.2. So that's what you would need to get started with the ASP.NET and WebTools 2012.2 uh, features. Now I also mentioned that there's this tool called Web Essentials 2012. We want to take a look at what the, the things that it has to offer. Some of their features include TypeScript support. Um, we'll talk a little bit about TypeScript here in a little bit, including uh, minification, uh, region support, source maps, compiler settings. Uh, then they have some additional support for style sheets. It'll do vendor specific property generation. So if you're doing CSS and you've got <coughs> maybe a couple of the properties for a transform of some sort, and Mozilla does it one way, and WebKit does it another way, and Chrome does it another way, and Firefox has their own, and Opera has their own. You have all these different vendor prefixes. The Web Essentials 2012 will generate that block 
of all the women. Yes. Yes. <laughs> there is clapping in the back of the room for those of you who are watching this video after the fact. Um, and yeah, it's one of those you can't always remember which prefixes apply where. Yeah, Web Essentials 2012, you want to have this. Um, it'll add missing standard properties too. So if it picks up something that should be there, it'll say, hey, I have this property. You really want to add it. It'll also keep vendor specific property values in sync while typing. It has browser support for properties and selectors, modernizer support, IntelliSense enhancements. There's more. There's JavaScript support changes, including minification, outlining, smarter embed, and autocomplete braces. Other features that it includes are design coding, which includes the Lipsum generator. <laughs> and Markdown. This is just a small list that I'm sharing here. A complete list, check out that. And if by the end of that list you don't see anything that interesting, you can move on. But otherwise, tweet me later and say, hey Sarah, that Web Essentials 2012, thank you for showing this because it saved me so much time. Um, I can tell you I enjoy playing with it so far. Next I want to get into TypeScript. How many of you guys have heard of TypeScript? Okay, how many of you guys have played around with it? Okay, okay, so we have a few people who've, who've heard of it, and even fewer who've played around with it. It's a good thing. That way I can show you all, and those who haven't played with it before will be like, oh, something new. So this is the website, typescriptwarning.org. It's a scalable language. It supports classes and modules and interfaces. Yay. Um, it starts from JavaScript, ends with JavaScript. So you're going to see the JavaScript syntax, you're going to see JavaScript all around it, it compiles down to JavaScript. So think of like CoffeeScript, you have another language that's going to co compile down. You can incorporate, uh, incorporate popular JavaScript libraries, um, you can use existing JavaScript code, and you can call your TypeScript from JavaScript. Again, you can, you can see it compiles down to JavaScript that can be run in any browser, Node.js, uh, server or ES3 compatible environments. Uh, definitely has strong tooling for large applications and simple based navigation. So getting started. Uh, bring both of those up. <coughs> so if you have Node.js package manager, it's a simple npm install dash g type trip. Visual Studio, you have to download it. And there on the download page are various versions to play with. And then once installed, this TypeScript tutorial is where you want to start. And I'll show you why. I'm going to open that up. I love sites like this that allow you to just say, you know what, let's play. And then you can come in here and say, OK, I want a, a walkthrough of classes, for example. So we're looking at the type strip over here, and this is what it'll compi compile down. So it's pretty simple. I mean, you've got class greeter, and then you have this greeting string thing, and the constructor for this message, which is a string. And if you look at over here in the JavaScript, you don't have that string stuff explicitly stated, but you can do that here. And then it says greeter.prototype.greet. And that's what this greet here changes to. So what's nice with this site is you can play around and say, OK, what does this do? How does this work? Do some side by side, looking back and forth. You can also say, you know what, let's run. So I can say, let's look at the ray tracer demo. So I already know what it looks at. You see a lot of vector stuff. I can tell you I'm not smart enough to do all the calculations and making things look pretty fun. They did it. So it's a run. <coughs> this is what it generates. Again, it's <coughs> taking your type script, bringing it down to JavaScript and running it. Um, you'll notice here, you can get it. It'll tell you where to get it. Nice, pretty site. Go in. Now you can contribute to it. 
Yeah, I've already got it installed on my Visual Studio. So just so you can see what it looks like. I'm going to close some of these. We're going to add a new project. And this thing, what it has to add is this site script over here and HTML application site script. Again, this template is part of when you do the TypeScript installation. So you can see the TS file and what it changes into. Now, something to keep in mind with TypeScript is there's this little word here, preview. <laughs> um, think of it as, it, go ahead and play with it. It's going to have its quirks. Um, I've had some issues with Visual Studio where I've tried to edit the TS file and it just looks at me funny and like, what are you trying to type in? So then I open it in Notepad++ and edit it and save it. And Visual Studio is like, oh, okay, now I see what you're doing. <laughs> I don't know why that is.